playful about it, about his experience. <laughs> great, right, right. Breaking the law. Right. He's getting away with it. <laughs> you see it? Right. You know? That's why, that's why you study astrology. Because uh -huh. you learn the nature of people. Yep. And you really can perceive. And your own nature. You yeah. Know, yeah. And, and, and kind of revel in it, you know? Because mm -hmm. that's what Sun wants to do. He wants to laugh and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So what that was that was a good example. Thank you for being an example. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily a good one. I like to tell my kids, not a good example. <laughs> okay. Well now look at let's keep moving at I've had too much fun with this class. I mean I'm glad nobody else showed up. We wouldn't have as much fun, brother. Right, right. <laughs> Especially if that been the Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk. Anyway, so so okay, this is uh, both of you by the way. A Jupiter aspects give magnanimous spirit, a prophetic spirit, a prodig prodigal spirit, uh, who lives large in whatever they do in life is often extreme in many aspects. Jupiter afflicted can revolt against the law, the rules, the structures of society, and religions. Jupiter rebels at limitations and restrictions, but they imposed, be they imposed by time or by space. Remember Zeus rebelled against his father Saturn. Remember the mythological story? He overthrew the father, Kronos, okay? And because he devoured all of his children, but he never got one child, remember? Zeus, he's hidden in a cave by his mother. Sounds like Christ, doesn't it? Okay, sounds like Moses, doesn't it? Those are the same archetypes, you understand that? Same archetypes. So they, they preserve the life, he's preserved alive, he's not devoured, and he, of course, uh, uh, they introduce a potion in, in Kronos' diet, and he disgorges these children again. They're reincarnated, basically, is what it's telling. So anyway, uh, okay, so Zeus rebelled against his father, Saturn, father time. Sun, Jupiter aspects is potentially a healer of both body and, and, uh, and, and spirit. You hear this? Jupiter in both your charts means you have healing ability. And you have the healing ability that comes from the soul and from the spirit, and it comes from the touch. Um, it's, you gotta re, you got to recognize this. You've experienced it already. Yeah. And people have told me that. Yeah, it's powerful yeah. in you. Because mm -hmm. your sun and moon are very powerful. Yeah. So, okay, so it's potentially a healer of both spirit and body. Jupiter is Jesus or Jesus, the counselor, by the way. The healer, the prophet, and the sun aspects can bring life and healing to others through touch and counseling. I said it right here. This was done before I ever did your chart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I just need you to, to see. I mean... Um, we pull, when I'm constant, we're doing his tutoring class, I pull up charts just out of the random. I don't have any idea who they are. Guys like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. Remember that? Yeah. And he knows. Wow. I didn't, I just pulled it off the computer. I don't know. Two yoles. Right? Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. yoles. All with the worst plans. Just, it was really bad, Sheriff. Sure. Really there. No, you, you, you oh. see, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, so remember the sun represents the process of finding one's identity, the hero in us. You know, that's kind of who you were shining just now. You were the hero. You see that? It's not, it's not about ego. It's not about misinterpreting this. It's just recognizing this. I, he helped me even see it in my own self. Tim did. Because I'm teaching it, but yet he says, Ryan, don't you see what you're doing? There's your Mars sun talking again. You're in a battle again with telling this great story about this battle. You know, joyfully, you know? <laughs> how he whipped this guy's ass. <laughs> you know, how joyful can that be? <laughs> he was a bully. He deserved it. <laughs> you see? So anyway, so the hero in us, that which seeks recognition and praise for its kingly or queenly attributes. That's what it's doing. It represents where we can exert the most will. Leo, I will, and heart. That's what the sun is. It's your will. It's your heart. The sun is the playful, dramatic. Were you dramatic? Were you dramatic? You were dramatic, very dramatic. Okay, the, the sun is the playful, dramatic part of our nature, seeking to be entertained and to entertain. So when you get into talking about things where you go up against the system of rules, regulations, and all that stuff, whatever they be. Or when I'm happy something. Oh, I bet. You probably. <laughs> <laughs> but I still break into something. <laughs> See, but that, those are areas where you break the laws. You break the limits, you break the re restrictions, okay? And that's where you revel in. That's what your spirit gets joy out of. See it? 
You understanding yourself better now? Okay. Saturn to Sun aspects can put a serious damper on the joyful Sun. If we're talking about Saturn, it also can bring strong discipline to the spirit and patience, the spirit of conservatism and caution. Saturn brings contraction, as Jupiter brings expansion, it wants to go beyond the limits. Saturn can't see the forest for the trees, whereas Jupiter can't see the trees for the forest. <laughs> so that's how it works, guys. You, you need to see those two things about Saturn and Jupiter. You know, Jupiter's always focused on the little trees, you know, Jupiter, Ju I mean, Saturn is. And Jupiter, man, he sees the whole picture. You know, he's great at seeing the vision, but he's not good at putting it together piece by piece like Saturn does. Saturn, we need Saturn, okay, to analyze it, to, to break it apart, to numeralize it, to put it into um, some, some structure that we can work with, okay. Sun to Saturn, negative side of Saturn to Sun aspects bring a jaundiced view of life. Okay, why? And the cus, cup's always half empty, it's not ever, ever half full with Saturn Sun aspect. You'll see that all the time. People tend to be really negative with that side. They can be. Now, it could be Jupiter. You gotta remember something. Jupiter is not, I mean, Saturn is not always, it, it's, um, <clears throat> how do I describe this? Um, well, let me keep going, maybe I'll get it in. I might have written it already. Okay, um, okay. The Saturn can, can represent a hard life and a life full of trials, but it also has a satirical, there's Saturn again, satirical view of humor and life. We often describe, ascribe Saturn to discipline and caution, but Saturn can be the essence of carnality, seeking to satisfy. Listen to the word Saturn, satisfy. Why do you think the early Christians spent time fasting? to overcome their what? Their desires to satisfy their senses, okay? Because that's Saturn's control. Saturn wants you to constantly satisfy yourself, whether it's for sex or food or whatever it is. It's wanting you to do that. It's, it's the, the, it's Peter, what you thou desire the things of the earth more than things of God. See what I'm saying? So, okay, okay, so, uh, seeing, seeking to satisfy Saturn, it's ever, it's ever, it's every sense is debauchery, in the proverbial "eat, drink, and be merry" attitude. Remember the gold god Pan; it's an archetypal expression of the side of Saturn. Pandering, you heard that word before? Came from Pan, the gold god. Goes back to Capricorn, Saturn. Okay, our sensual nature of unrestrained pleasure. People that pander to our lower nature. You heard those expressions? Okay, like a. Uh, uh, pornography panders to your lower nature. You see what I mean? So all that stuff is Saturn stuff, right? Get you down here instead of up here. Kingdom of heaven, no, nah, don't use that energy for that. Keep it down here. Let's, have a, let's either have a degenerative behavior or let's have a, a generative act and have a child or let's regenerate and bring that energy up. That's what it's about. Okay, so, okay. The message of Saturn often imparts what it often imparts is duty, responsibility, okay? Saturn rules satirical humor, which is basically what is satirical humor? It's accusing others with humor. Think about it. It's like the old cartoonist. You remember seeing the um, pictures of Nixon with a swoopy nose, big exaggerated ears on Obama? What's that? That's poking fun at somebody, but using humor, and we call that satirical humor, it comes from Saturn. Because Saturn is Satan, is who? The accuser of our brother. So positive side of accusing is satirical humor. Some people are good at it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, <clears throat> Saturn aspects uh, to, to it, to your son, you have someone who can bring fun and even joy with its sharp, critical Saturnine ac accusations to create, look at comedians, they're good at it. To create laughter at oneself or others at the expense of critical humor is a part of belonging to Saturn's sun aspects. So Saturn can make that, turn all that energy of critical stuff and in, in accusation into fun. And we don't, we laugh at it, we can't help but laugh, you know? Whether it's laughing at yourself or laughing at others. So people that have that strong Saturn Sun connection are good at this. And they're- It's well aspected. Yeah, well, even if it's hard aspect, they tend to be more critical, maybe harder, and more um, judgmental maybe. <coughs> okay. Uh, gives a hunting appetite, by the way. Do you know that Saturn is the sun? Gives a hunting appetite and love of music. 
uh, rustic environments as Pan was god of hunters and art shepherds. Pan was an excellent musician and played the pipes. I've noted the strong Saturn aspect often gives musical ability, especially when aspecting the creative sun. I'll show you something. Meaning, and, and it's got to be in some aspect that it's touching the same degrees within orb. We have orb of influence. For example, uh, the sun has a wide orb. It has about, it can have as much as 15 degree orb. Uh, it's, it's big orb. The moon has a 12 degree orb. The rest of the major planets uh, have an eight degree orb. And the minor ones like Pluto, Neptune, uh, Uranus, they have a six degree orb. Now let's say you have a sun, let's say you have a moon, uh, a moon square, uh, let's say moon square, a major planet like Jupiter. 12 and 8 is what? So 20. 20. Divide that in half, you know the orb. See, if it was a minor planet, 12 and 6 would be what? 18. 18 half of that's 9. So now these rules are, are, it's like I teach astrology in a way that's a little different. I'm not one, I'm, because I'm not Saturn, I'm Jupiter, okay? That's my essence. I say don't always get stuck on these little rules. You know, they, they'll hang, hang you up. You know, be, use your own judgment. Use your own wisdom. Sometimes things are more than they are. And if you have three planets in aspect, and this one's aspecting this one, and this one up here is also aspecting this one down here, but the, this one down here is not quite aspecting it, all of a sudden they are aspecting because they're in a cross with each other. So you tend to bring them in and know that they're making a, a message together. So <clears throat> this is, um, um, can I do this? Oh, wow. So if my sun is within two degrees of Saturn, then that's what's that now? Let me see your turn. No, no, Saturn, your Saturn's at 7 degrees Leo. Your Sun's at 25 Libra. You see it? Now look at Uranus over there. The planet of intuition, the planet of computers, the planet of Aquarius, the planet of the new age. Uranus is at 21 degrees, almost 22 degrees of uh, Gemini. It's in perfect trine to your Sun. It's only 3 degrees from being exact trine to the Sun. That's the most powerful connection. The other planet that's close to your sun is the moon. It's at 21, 22, almost 22 degrees of uh, Leo. So the connections to your spirit are Uranus and the moon particularly, very strong, very strong. Um, um, you know, the, the fact that you were born with Pluto and the moon and Saturn all together in your chart up in that ninth house. Uh, the moon rules what, folks? Can I talk? Is it okay, Brian? You don't care. No, that's you know, his... Okay, the moon is the mother, right? Okay, and, and it's, it's joined, it's, it's real, real close orb, it's within just, uh, uh, you know, seven degrees of his um, of moon. And, and Saturn's right there, too. Okay, uh, his mother committed suicide. Okay, and that fits that aspect totally. I mean, that's, uh, that Leo, because not only is it, look at this, I want you to pay attention to this in your chart. Not only is the moon and Pl uh, Pluto and Saturn up there in the heavens in Leo, it's exactly squaring, almost exactly squaring Mars. Mars is 17 Scorpio. You see this? Yeah. So, and it's in your, it's, it's in, it's your Scorpio, your Mars and Scorpio is squaring your moon, which, and Saturn and Pluto. That, that all is the most injurious two planets, three planets you could have. Yeah. How many times have I taught you guys this? Yeah. Three planets that are dangerous in a chart, Pluto, Mars, and, and, um, and Saturn. If you have all three in a man's chart, it can be dangerous because they can be a dangerous person. I don't usually tell this in groups but because I, people read it. Somebody told me the other day she was going to sue me because she, had a, uh, she was in a class, and I put on YouTube that uh, the yod is very fatalistic and it's the finger of God, right. and I should sue you. One of my students. I said, go ahead, you want my furniture? Exactly. Come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> the, point being, the point being that she could probably try to get me for something, maybe, uh, let's see, uh, mental distress or maybe emotional, whatever. That's all right, I don't care. I mean, I have nothing to sue. But the whole point of it is she can go to a lot of textbooks and get the same message, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Sue, sue the authors of all those textbooks that also wrote this. Uh, by the way, I, I printed out something that I found on the Internet by somebody else that, 
uh, the other day, quite a few days ago. But I was so impressed by it because it really, even though it's somebody I don't know, mm -hmm. and he may be a good, he may be bad as father, I don't know, but what he said about the yod was amazing. It's the best description of the yod I've ever seen. I, I printed it for you guys. Okay. I printed 10 of them for all this crowd here. <laughs> <laughs> for this big crowd here. So, okay, I'm going to give that out so I don't forget them because I tend to get busy here. And I also did something else. Here. So this is, uh, there's two pages of that. And, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> don't trip over all the feet. <laughs> don't trip over all the feet. Okay, honey. Okay, give that to Lena. Okay, here we go. Okay, and now this here is something I did some time back, and I, I, <laughs> I wrote a love letter to Elena. She doesn't, I don't think she ever saw it, I don't know. This is a little thing on the back. I says, um, I says uh, the minute I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind that was. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. It's actually from Rumi. I didn't write it, but I wrote it to, you know, to express my love for her. So anyway, you can have my poem from Rumi. <laughs> but this here, I wrote a long time ago, and what it is, I found it today. I thought, what a nice treasure for somebody. It's all about Scorpio and Pluto. And um, it'll give you some real insights into it, okay? So... I never put it on a computer back then. I just had written it all out and didn't get a chance to digitize it up here. So we were talking about Saturn and charts being significant. This is Andre's chart. My son, Andre, our son, Andre. Um, you look at the most powerful planet in the chart. Saturn, mid-heaven. In its own sign, it rules through signs, really. Capricorn, Aquarius. We tend to put a Uranus in there, but it's very powerful there. <clears throat> and do you remember I showed you the symbol for Uranus right here? What is it? I said, what did it, what's it look like? You started to say it. Huh? Hearing? Two, yeah, two ears listening, right? Very intuitive, right? Very good listener, right? Guess what his greatest talent is? You know, he can sit down and play by ear. He can play music for an entire he could do an entire, um, what do you call it? Uh, he, he huh? I, I took him to a blues club where I have a bunch of friends that play blues. Musicians from way back. And he got on, he was allowed to get on the piano and he started playing the band. And they just, they were gathering their equipment. They all stopped and sat down just to listen to him. And he just, from, yeah. from here, from, from his head into wow. his, you know, no music or anything, played Chopin for about 40 minutes. And you need to do that just, for hours. And you could. Wow. That's what he said. He said, I keep going, but you know, everybody needs to close out of here. <laughs> See, one of the things I had never put together yet. I on it in my book a little bit. I talk about Saturn somehow is involved in hearing. Because Peter, Peter, Saturn, Satan, he was, Christ said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He called, he called him by who he was. He was the accuser, but he took off the ear of the servant. Remember that story? So somehow there's something in that message that I haven't been able to figure out yet. Maybe one of you will. But that, to me, there's, there's something hidden in that, that whole story that we should learn. And uh, I think it's something to do with Saturn. See, Saturn rules, Saturn rules the skeletal frame, teeth to bones. Think about what hearing is. Little bones inside, stirrup, what do they call them? Stirrups and something. and Anvil. Anvil. And that's how you hear. It's the bones, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling some way there's some significant connection between Saturn and hearing and a person that's very good at it you know has this kind of energy and I've seen it over and over in charts with people that are very musical Saturn anyway also Saturn midheaven and Saturn remember father time Saturn is the divider of time and space Saturn is mathematics Saturn is analysis on a critical level of taking things apart putting them together and people that have Saturn in that high angle in a chart very often are very scientific. Look at Andre, very scientific mind. You know, he just sees through it all, you know? So this is, this is what happens when you see a chart and you're doing charts with people. You know, you're gonna see, um, how did I do this? Um, did I do that? Eh. You can't do that on that one. 
I thought I just did it. How did I get it bigger? Uh, down on the keypad. Down on the oh, oh, the, 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 there, that's it. That's what I wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah that's it. <laughs> you got it. Now look at Jupiter and his son, by the way. Brian, same aspect you have. Sun conjunct Jupiter. We're back to magnanimous what? Help me out, guys. I've been teaching you this. Magnanimous spirit. You see, you see somebody like that with a Jupiter conjunct, and he's got, he is, a, he's very, he'd give you the shirt off his back. He is that kind of kid. And he's a very stoic, because that's Saturn in the mid heaven. He's a very stoic kid. He'll go without food if he doesn't have the money. And he'll never ask for help, you know? Huh? Yeah, she took advantage of that. So, but he's also like you. Where's your moon, Brian? What sign is it in? Hmm? Yeah, it's it's in Gemini. Yeah. Oh no, his moon's in Leo. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You got a moon in. Wait, where'd I put it? No, oh, did I mess up? Did I mess up? Was was I reading something else? Yeah. So, was I reading something else here? Let me look. Uh, 